Okay, we're going to continue kind of with what we talked about <laughs> yesterday, which was uh, making swipe lines. Okay, uh, this is uh, a little bit more fine tuned. So, for example, when I'm making little S shapes and stuff like that, it's actually going to draw a path that, um, that follows um, you know, pretty much exactly where I uh, moved when I was uh, touching down. Uh, the disadvantage of this is, well, you know, I actually like the previous example more where we were, where we were using animated textures for the swipe lines, but, uh, you know, this, this could be good for something, okay? Uh, you could even have the um, uh, char animated characters follow uh, SK shape nodes, which is what this is. Uh, there, there is an action for that, but uh, that's not actually what we're going to get into today. We're just going to talk about uh, creating them. So first thing you want to do is, and I'm just working off the, uh, the trimmed out version of the uh, sprite kit template like I was in the last video. Uh, we're just going to make a path array over here. We don't actually need to do anything in our did move to view statement because uh, we're really only doing things when we touch down on the screen. So uh, when we touch down, uh, first thing we'll do is uh, remove everything from the path array. Okay, so this is going to hold on to the, our location values as we're moving. Uh, and then when we release, we're going to create the line. Then when we touch back down again, we'll get rid of all that past information that's stored in the path array. So basically just all those previous locations from the, the first time we touched down. And so on like that, right? So in our touches move statement, our touch move statement, uh, we're just going to put in here path array dot append, okay? And you just put in here the, uh, the POS variable or position variable, which is a CG point variable representing the place at which you're touching down the screen, right? So... You know, the longer you kind of move your finger around and touch down, uh, the more um, points are going to be added uh, to this path array. And if you ever wanted to, you could um, uh, you could do something like this. You could actually probably make more sense doing the, the touch up statement. But you could write um, print point uh, and then just path array dot count if you want to see how many CG point variables actually got uh, added in there. Uh, what we're going to do though is create the line at this point. So we're going to write a function and create a line. And uh, I, I would say in about five minutes, you could turn this video off. Okay. <laughs> Maybe even less than that. Uh, because what I teach you after that point is just kind of extra stuff that I was tinkering around with. But um, the main thing you're going to see here is uh, we're just going to create a path um, and uh, Fill it in with the stroke color, give it a, an optional glow if you want. Uh, and I think that's probably going to be good enough for most of it. Okay, so um, the way this works is our SK shape node has a path property that wants a CG, path, a CG mutable path um, as uh, its value. So we're going to create that right now. So we just say let path equals CG mutable path. Uh, and then we're going to move this to the initial uh, starting location, which is going to be our path array. And then you put in here and you're opening and closing square brackets the first item in that array, okay, which is just represented by zero, okay, so it's basically just right where we touch down, right? Uh, or well, actually, it's, I guess it's more kind of where we um, where we uh, began moving from. So I suppose too, you could put in here after you remove everything else out, you could make your first um, append to the the path array uh, when you touch down. Let's try that. Why not? Uh, okay, so then four point in path array we are going to then basically keep adding to our path here so we're going to say path dot add line two point and then you just put in here point okay so it's just going to iterate through everything that's inside of the path array which are all cg point var variables and just basically build up this path out of that and if you wanted to test it at that point that's fine you're not uh, it's not going to hurt anything really um, in fact, probably the only thing you're really going to see right now is just uh, some information in the, um, yep, there we go. So it added, it basically created a path with, or the path array has 51 items in it. So I'm going to do a very small movement here. And you can see even with small movements, you, you get a lot of additions uh, in there. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of go all through here, 168, right? And maybe even that's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Uh, okay, so then we're going to say let line, and then this is going to equal uh, SK shape node. Put it this way, it's a very detailed path. Uh, and then, so that's our SK shape node, right? Uh, then line dot path equals uh, path, okay? And uh, yeah, all right. So now the rest of this is just kind of the uh, how the, the appearance of it, right? So we're just going to put in here line dot uh, fill color. This is going to equal dot clear. Uh, if you don't do dot clear in there, you're going to get some very interesting results, which I guess we could look at. But basically, it tries to kind of fill in um, sections 
of the screen that um, that uh, whatever you can with the, the path. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's uh, do line dot stroke color. That's probably the one that you really want. Okay, so let's try setting that at red. Uh, and then if you have a um, a line width that's significant, you know, like something way more than one, uh, you'll notice that the line cap looks a little funny if you don't set this to round. So go ahead and set that to round, okay? And you can see if I just put in here period, it'll show you some of the other, other options you can put in. And then, uh, then the one that looks cool, let's put in here glow width, and we'll try setting that at 20. And then what we need to do is just actually add the line in there. So we're gonna say child line and Let's give it another shot. Uh, well, that's, oh, I guess, yeah, we'll take a look. Okay, so there you go. And of course, it's not fading away because we're not uh, telling it to fade away at this point. So, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's see, you know what? Nah, no. Uh, let's just test this with blue real quick. And, uh, and then we'll start writing an SK action sequence that is going to get rid of that thing. So you see what it does. So if I did kind of a circle shape, it'll try to fill that in, right? Uh, but then we do other things that you know just certainly doesn't look as good. Like that's a little weird. Okay, so we don't want that clear. Get that get out of here. All right, uh, let's do that sequence. So we're gonna say uh, let fade. This is gonna be an SK action. It's gonna equal SK action, and then fade out. Oh, uh, if you are interested, look at this right over here. It says follow. It's asking for a path right which you just created over here uh, speed or duration are, are uh, two options in there so if you did want to make a, um, a sprite follow a path uh, that's an option obviously you wouldn't want to make your path follow the path though uh, with duration we'll just make that be one fade dot timing mode equals dot ease in and then let remove this is going to be an sk action equals sk action uh, remove from parent. Okay, so that's an action just made for removing the sprite from the screen. And uh, we're going to go ahead and set up the, uh, sorry, we're going to go ahead and set up an SK action uh, sequence uh, right here in the same line in which we're running this, this, the, uh, the sequence. Okay, saves us one line of typing. And uh, for an SK action sequence, what it wants within these parentheses here is uh, an opening and closing square brackets, and uh, then comma separate out the actions that you want to put in there. So you can put more than two if you wanted, right? So in this case, it's just going to fade, then remove. And at that point, we have actually uh, kind of completed the main thing that I wanted to teach here. Eight, eight minutes, not too bad. So there you go, it just fades out. So there you go, swipe lines, swipe lines, right? And uh, now let's take a look at a uh, kind of an alternate way of shading this. Uh, let me grab a bunch of this code that we've already got. And let's see, get rid of that. Line two, line two. Well, that's line two. Uh, we're gonna do a stroke shader there and then let's not do any glow width, okay. Um, so when we set up our SK shape node, uh, you can see here's some of the other options that you've got. Okay. Oh, look at that. One of them's just a path. <laughs> Wait, that's the one we used before, wasn't it? I don't know. No, we didn't. We just initialized it with nothing, then set the path. So there's all sorts of different ways you can go about this. But uh, spline points is another option. Uh, you'll see it's asking for an unsafe mutable pointer over here. I had no clue what that was. Turns out you just put an ampersand over here and you can just write path array and uh, you're good to go. So uh, and then for the count, just put in here pathray.count, okay? Uh, here's the tricky thing, uh, our SK shader, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this in, otherwise you guys are gonna be screaming at me that I took too long writing this. Uh, but basically this is just, it's kind of some separate code, uh, but it's split up over four lines over here. So uh, it's in quotes and then you just do a plus symbol after every line. So it kind of all combines together to make this um, uh, gradient shader, right? So uh, down here, what you're gonna wanna do is write line two dot stroke uh, shader. Go ahead and get rid of the stroke color. And then this is gonna equal your gradient shader. And I believe, 
and then we're ready to add this guy in. So I'll just put in here self.addChild, line two, and then we can put this in here as well, line two, run. And you'll see it, um, it'll now make a, uh, see, see what it did? Here's the problem though. It, uh, it is removing that line two, but it's not fading it out for some reason, right? So don't know what to tell you about that one. I guess somebody just doesn't have, uh, I don't know, Sprite Kid's not playing nice with uh, uh, SK shaders. Uh, and then finally, there is another way that you can go about uh, setting up your gradient shader. So you could do this. You could put in here, let uh, gradient shader two, and then put in here SK shader, and then uh, you'll see it's got source over here. And then uh, what you can do is you can put in here the name of a separate file. So frag shader is going to be the name of this, dot F-A-S-H. And I've already uh, added this in here. It's just a um, it's just an empty file, okay? So you can just create any old file, just empty, right? Just give it a name like frag shader on your end. And then uh, you can put in uh, exactly what's over here. And you'll notice that... Uh, this code, so void main parentheses, whatever, and so on, is going to look really similar to what you've got over here, void main parentheses, right? So again, it's this is really just the same thing. You could you could copy this into here. Of course, you'd have to remove out uh, the uh, quotes and then the the plus symbols, but right, yeah, again, same thing basically. Uh, this one though, I had trouble testing on the simulator. I had to do it on my device. Uh, so if, if you're kind of playing the home game here, I'd say go ahead and uh, test it on your device. Be sure though you set this to gradient shader two. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of mute this. Otherwise it's gonna keep saying that it's unused. Uh, so anyway, uh, that is actually it. If you wanna do a little further reading on all this stuff, especially the frag shaders, which is kind of just something I was poking around a little bit for the with for this lesson. There's plenty of examples uh, on the internet. Uh, so some could even make like, do changes over time. That's maybe how you could do, actually do the fade properly. Uh, you can uh, kind of do a pointy or um, like stippled line effects or, or basically like, uh, what are those? You know, kind of lines with hashes in them. Uh, checkered lines, stuff like that. So there's all sorts of different uh, options. And uh, even if you go over here and you just uh, select uh, SK shader, and then you jump over here to the help for it, uh, you'll see, well, it does say SK shader does not support OpenGL extension. Yeah. Huh, odd. Um, but uh, yeah, so over here, so here's an example. That's just the GL frag color SK default shading. And where's another example? There is another one somewhere in here. So, oh yeah, that's interesting. Who knows? All right. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to leave you guys uh, with that. And uh, hey, if for some weird reason you're not listening to me on the Cartoon Smart app, look that up in the App Store. There's also plenty of links all over the website to the app. Uh, lots of free tutorials. Uh, anything that's recent is usually going to be free. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video.